Hey friends, Pastor Chris here with today's Gold Nugget from God's Word. Today we're looking at the topic, the temptation to rely on myself instead of God. Too often we do that. We fail when we rely on ourselves instead of turning to the Lord. Today we're going to be in two different uh, books of the Bible. First we're going to be in Matthew chapter 4 and then we'll also be in Deuteronomy chapter 8. So let's begin with Matthew chapter 4, those first four verses there, and let's look at what Scripture says. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Then the tempter approached him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. He answered, It is written, Man must not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. We have to realize that the Lord had just experienced something in the previous chapter. The Lord had just been baptized by John. And the Bible says that he had this mountaintop experience. If you go to Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, let me read to you what it says there. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and the lightning upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So the Lord had just had this experience there, and in immediately following that, he's tempted by Satan. Um, we need to understand some things about the temptations and realize that we're children of God and because of that we battle this thing called temptation each and every day. Um, here's some things I, I wrote down. Only Jesus knew of the temptations. Uh, the gospel writers wrote what Jesus told them about those temptations. He was led by the Spirit to be tempted, first of all, to learn obedience, to control his mind, his body, his spirit. Hebrews 5, 8 says, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And that is so true. We can learn so much through the difficult things that we go through in life. Um, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8, 9, and 10 where it talks about how we're saved. It says we're saved by God's grace through faith and that not of ourselves, that it's a gift of God. It's not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship. Um, we have to understand being God's workmanship means that we're going to go through some difficult times in life. Um, just as the potter, he puts his hands on the clay, sometimes he applies pressure to shape it. And sometimes in the Christian life, the Lord, our potter, the, the creator, he puts his hands on us and he allows some pressure in our lives. But it's through those days of pressure that we grow, we're shaped, and we're molded into that image that God wants us to be. And of course, there's those days that are the, the good days, the easier days in life. And that's those days where the Lord is just gently holding that clay, that pot, as the potter's holding the clay, He's holding it uh, gently, molding it. It's almost like the Lord's giving you a, a hug on those days and shaping you and just telling you, I love you. Um, but when the difficult days come, our first response is, how can I fix this? That's the temptation we all battle. And what we need to do is turn to the Lord immediately and lean upon Him and understand that he can provide us a, a way of escape and he can show us and teach us and grow us through whatever temptation we face. So the Lord was tempted so he could secure righteousness, which is that ideal per perfection and sinlessness for man. Second Corinthians 5.21 says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So the Lord, he took on the sin of all the world when he went to the cross of Calvary. and But even before that, 
we have this picture of Jesus being baptized and then immediately being tempted uh, with this thing called sin, and he overcame it. Uh, to experience all that the human infirmities of human life, uh, the Lord went through all that to experience all those things so that he would be able to aid us when we are confronted with temptation. You see, the Lord was faced with temptation so he would know what we feel. And praise the Lord that he has the victory over those things. Remember, God does not tempt us. James 1.13 says, Let no one say when he is tempted that I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. So God doesn't tempt us, but he does allow it. He does allow us to be tempted in life, <clears throat> and he, he allows it so he can prove uh, and demonstrate so that our faith can be uh, tested and proven uh, to strengthen and prepare us for the heavier responsibilities in life. So he can demonstrate his grace, his mercy, his power uh, in, in all of us as his children. So again, God allows temptations in our life to prove and demonstrate his faith, number one. Secondly, to strengthen and to prepare us for heavier responsibilities. And third, he allows temptation in our life to demonstrate his mercy, his grace, and his power in our lives. Um, one thing that is very important for us to have victory over this thing called temptation is to have regular communion with God. And I'm not talking about partaking of communion where you're taking the cup and the bread. That's important as well. But I'm talking about a regular time where you commune with God. It's essential for us to have that mountaintop experience just as the Lord did he, he spent time with his father. His father was pleased with him, and his father blessed him. Um, and, and we need to do the same thing. Remember what the Lord said to his son, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So we need to spend time with our father praying and, and communing with the Lord so he can prepare us as we go out in the world and are tempted uh, before or after every great trial or temptation, we need to commune with the Lord. Uh, there's going to be periods of great service in our lives to God, and we need to be in constant communion with Him then as well so that He can use us and we can be pleasing to Him in all that we, uh, all that we do. Um, so then it skips over and it goes to Deuteronomy chapter 8. And here in Deuteronomy chapter 8, starting with verse number 2, it says, Remember that the Lord your God led you on the entire journey these 40 years in the wilderness. Of course, it's talking about the children of Israel. <clears throat> when they were freed from Egypt, they began this journey. They were promised this land called the promised land. And it was going to be like heaven on earth. And for us, we have been promised a land, too. We've been promised heaven. That's a promised land for you and I. And we have the children of Israel, which is a type of you and I today, that we're going through this life. We're making our way on the journey toward the end of coming into that place called heaven. These people were on their journey. And there's two generations here that, that took place. That first generation, they didn't get to go in because they disobeyed God. They were uh, complaining so much about uh, being thirsty and having uh, being hot and being hungry. And even when God provided them with manna to eat, um, they complained about that. They said, well, it has no flavor. We wish we could go back to Egypt where we had the leeks and the garlic and where we had uh, the good food there. Forgetting all about the torture that they were under there as slaves. But let's read through this and let's, let's see what it says here. First of all, it says in, in verse number two, 
remember. Now that word in the Hebrew language is the word zakar, Z-A-K-A-R. It means to mark out, recognize, to be mindful, to recall, to make it something in your life that you will never forget. You remember that. So remember that the Lord your God led you on the entire journey these 40 years in the wilderness so that he might humble you and test you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you by letting you go hungry. So think about that for a moment. The Lord put the children of Israel in the desert and he allowed them to go through some difficult days uh, it's 100 degrees out there. There's not food everywhere, so they were hungry. It's hot, and they're sweating, and there's no water unless God provides it for them, and he does. He does provide that, and he did provide them food. He provided them this thing called manna, and that word manna, um, the definition of that word means what is it? They didn't know what it was, but that's what it was. And every morning they were to get up and there would be provision for them. They would eat enough for just that day. And they were not to save any till the next day because it wouldn't be any good. Some of them did that. And of course, it was bad the next day. So they were to live off of the daily provision. What a lesson for you and I that to realize that God does provide for us. For the day, we get so anxious and worried about tomorrow. Uh, scripture says, let tomorrow worry for itself. Let it take care of itself. Focus on today. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't be smart, that we shouldn't plan ahead, that we shouldn't uh, save some and be prepared for the future. You, you need to do those things. Um, but it doesn't mean to store up all of your treasures in such a way that is not honoring to God. We are to be people that demonstrates a life of, of humility, a life of, of giving, a life of uh, living our lives like Galatians 5, the fruits of the Spirit, to have that type of life that we're going through. So realizing, first of all, he said he's providing manna to eat. It's a promise that he's given to them, that he's going to provide for them. Then he goes on and he says, uh, which you and your ancestors have not known so that you might learn that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So we're to live by God's word. Secondly, it says here, your clothing did not wear out. So the Lord's reminding them, he's saying, I provided you food. I provided you clothing. You've got clothing when you left, and God allowed that clothing to last the entire time that they were in the wilderness wanderings. Um, what you've got there is people that's in the wilderness, and they're being humbled by God. God's providing, but they're not seeing it. He even goes on and says, your feet did not swell these 40 years. I mean, they were walking all that time. They didn't have a nice air-conditioned car or truck to get into. They were walking through the desert. It was 100 degrees out there, poisonous snakes, scorpions, other dangerous animals that were looking for them. They were hungry. They were thirsty. They had heat exhaustion, fatigue. They were strained. They were under pressure, tension, distress, discouraged. They, they felt like they were in danger. Uh, they felt disgusted. That's the way they were acting and living. Um, it wasn't a group of people that was walking through there, especially not that first generation that was walking through and just singing songs of joy. Um, that first generation was actually condemned because of their sins. They never got to go into the promised land. Uh, that second generation, however, they did listen to Moses. They listened to his preaching, and the Lord met their needs. Folks, we, we need to understand that just as the Lord brought discipline in their lives, he brings discipline in our lives. When you are going through something 
difficult, a, a wilderness wandering where you're just going through something and you're like, Lord, what are you doing? Why am I in this situation right now? I don't understand this. This is too hard for me. Um, trust me, I, I've had times in my life where I've I've gone through some of those things. Early in ministry, I went through some very difficult days and uh, financial stress that was on my family. Um, there was a time where we didn't know where we were going to live, but we just kept trusting God. And I shouldn't say just kept. We we did. We We felt like that was our calling, and it was my calling in life. And that calling in our lives is not always going to be this bed of roses. Initially, we have, to re- we have to realize that the Lord is taking us through some difficult things to grow us and to mature us so he can bless us with the good things in life. Um, so he will meet your needs and your wants sometimes, but you've got to surrender your life to him and stop the complaining and just embrace whatever it is that you're going through. The next scripture is verses 6 through 10 of Deuteronomy 8, and it says this, So keep the commands of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams, springs, deep water sources, flowing in both valleys and hills, a land of wheat, barley, vines, figs, and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land where you will eat food without shortage, where you will lack nothing, a land whose rocks are iron and from whose hills you will mine copper. When you eat and are full, you will bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. It finishes up by telling us to live a life of thanksgiving, to praise the Lord for each and every day, for his provision. He allowed you to wake up this morning. That's a gift from God. He has allowed you to be able to get in your automobile and and drive to work, or he's provided you with that job that you have to go to. There's lots of people out there that would love to have your job. We need to step outside of our situation and just realize the blessings in our lives and give praise to the Lord for it. The children of Israel were on their way to the promised land. You and I are also on our way to the promised land. It's called heaven. So whatever we go through in this life is just for a moment. I love the way the Apostle Paul finishes up 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. He says this, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast. That means you should hold on to your faith. Then he says, be immovable, which means to be firmly planted on a foundation of Christ in your life. And then lastly, he says, always abounding in the work of the Lord, which means that you're continually growing in your knowledge and your understanding of the Lord. The last sentence says, knowing that labor is not in vain. So be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that work's not in vain. The challenge for you and I to do is to ask ourselves this question. How am I spending each day? Am I wasting time daily? Or am I living each and every day for the Lord? Am I growing in my knowledge of Him? Am I giving Him my all? Am I totally surrendered to His will for my life? Or am I letting the temptations of this world and of my life pull me in such a direction that I'm trying to lean on myself rather than leaning on the Lord. Do you rely on self instead of God? If you do rely on self instead of God, life's not going to be very fun for you. Um, You might say, well, there's all kinds of people that just look like they can go out there and live and have a great time sinning. They live for the devil and just seems like everything's going great for them. I promise you, those people may have in their hearts, they may have um, 
all kinds of worldly treasures, but those things will pass away. And the comfort and all the things that they appear to have, if you look a little deeper, and if you could see inside their hearts, they're still searching for something. There's something missing in their lives. And it's that something called Jesus Christ. It's that something called God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Um, we need to live our lives for the Lord every day. And not let temptation lead us. But let us have victory over it. Let's pray together. Father, thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray, Father, that uh, this study today would grow each of us, Lord, uh, to just take each day and realize it's a blessing from you, Father, and that we are on that journey to the promised land. And Father, until that day that you take us home, you desire for us to avoid temptation, Father, to have victory over it, to live our lives, as the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that labor is not in vain. Father, help us to make each and every day count, to have an impact in somebody else's life, Lord, to be a vessel that's pleasing to you in all that we do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you. I pray you have a great rest of your day. I hope you'll be in church on Sunday morning. If you don't have a church, I pray you'll visit Benton's Crossroads Baptist Church. We're located at 109 East Lawyers Road, Monroe, North Carolina, 28110 is the zip code here. Reach out to me, BCR for Benton's Crossroads, bcrpastor at gmail.com if I can do anything for you. If you've got a prayer request, I'd love to put you on uh, my personal prayer list. And also, if you just want to reach out to me or call me or text me, my phone number is 704-219-9814. Have a great rest of your day. God bless you, and I will see you next week.